Lyndon Arthur is back, ready to stake a claim for a shot at world glory when he takes on Argentina's Walter Gabriel Shekiera. Part of a huge night of action on Saturday, September the 17th. It's live and free on Channel 5. Could, could possibly. I think it will. We're rolling, by the way. This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Bit of deja vu here. Uh, in May, we were at Canelo Bibble, interviewed you during uh, Fight Week. We're here at another Canelo fight, Golovkin Trilogy. I'm joined by, behind the gloves, is Michelle Joy Phelps. Uh, couldn't even pronounce you know, your name you know, there. Do you know what's funny is the last time you opened the um, interview, you kind of said it exactly the same way. Like, you, you almost can't get my name right. Is it just me or other people as well? Well, when they get to the last name, usually, but it sounds like you're on the first name. Phelps is fine with me. <laughs> it's just the Michelle part. Yeah, it's the Michelle and then the joy part. is like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Good. Yeah. What's your other... You've got another name. Masters. That's it. The, my real bloodline last name. Masters. I'll call you Masters for this. Uh, yeah, how are things? Yeah, really good. Really good. Um... I'm enjoying being here this week. So far, a little, not not too much going on yet, but I'm hoping that really starts to kick off tomorrow, right? Yeah, we've got the presser tomorrow and then the weigh-in Friday. I mean, Canelo weigh-ins are normally well, busy. You're lucky because you got Gennady. I did get Gennady. Um, wasn't uh, too happy about one of my questions, actually. A lot of people are talking about it. Yeah, I said, uh, I don't know, Canelo has sort of ill feelings towards you. Uh, do you hate him? And he was like, what sort of question is that? But... <laughs> It's a fair question. Like, well, where's all this coming from? There's so much animosity, but I know. I know. Interesting. Um, but, yeah, in terms of yourself, obviously, uh, I see you've been uh, plugging away still with Behind the Gloves, but obviously you've had your new venture, which you... Well, Go on. Okay, hold on. So after our interview, why did everyone start assuming I was retiring? I never once said that, right? I never said it. I said I was taking a break. Yeah. It's like the Ross Rachel situation. Did he cheat? Did he not cheat? Was it a break? I don't know. Yeah, I saw a lot of comments <laughs> saying, oh, look, Michelle's leaving boxing yeah, and whatnot. Not. I'm just, I just needed a little reset, and I did. I did. In between that reset, prior to us doing the interview, um, I hadn't had the ACL job, which is the American Cornhole League job. Do you remember I got, I got an offer from them? I did. Basically, I did a charity event, and... Or should I say, how do I say this? I did a competition. It was me with a pro, so an amateur and a pro. And uh, if you won, then you obviously went on to participate further along. Uh, I didn't. I beat Chuck Liddell. That's probably my only, my only like uh, claim to fame on that one was that I beat Chuck Liddell. Um, and after that, I got a phone call the following week, and they were like, "We know this is a bit far fetched, but would you want to um, be our sideline reporter?" And I was like, uh, and at that point, I was already kind of stepping a little bit back from boxing, just, you know, taking a break, making it more part-time than full-time. And it happened so randomly, and I've been having a, a good time. It's on ESPN and CBS here in America, so it's been fun. Different. Different, but, um, yeah, more in the professional corporate world. Yeah, mm, yeah you're on TV. No. Yeah, yeah, but... The environment is like people are drinking while playing. Like it's it's just a whole different vibe. It's almost like one big hangout, but it just so happens to be live on TV. It's really cool. So I wouldn't so not corporate, but I get what you're saying because of the networks. But it's not corporate at all. Yeah, I'm comparing it to like IFL behind the gloves, where it's just the, <laughs> the least corporate thing going. Yeah, I mean, like I said, aside from the fact that you have these cameramen. These, these big cameras and it's live it's really like a really low like low maintenance easy environment great people i enjoy it and of course your other venture as well which you hinted at um i think a lot of people i saw in the comments did guess what that was yeah. um setting up an uh, only fans account so yeah. just talk to me about that and how it's gone yeah it's been amazing <laughs> it's been amazing honestly i'm surprised i haven't done it sooner um, yeah, I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with me taking my sexier photos off of Instagram for free and monetizing off of it. There's, you know, some people may not see a value in paying for it, and but there's a big group of people who do. So you're really just sort of catering to those people. Um, 
but it's no nudes, no nothing like that. It's just, you know, bikini, um, some lingerie, that sort of thing. That's just really what it is. So, and you know, my day-to-day -day stuff that I don't normally, or I wouldn't post on Instagram, all of that exclusive stuff gets on um, OnlyFans. But, can I just say this? So I'm actually going to be m migrating from OnlyFans to my own website. Kind of like Paige Van Saint did. Um, did am I saying her name right? Paige Van Saint. Yeah. God, my nose is watering. I had some like some jalapenos. <laughs> um, yes, she's now a part of. She's in wrestling. I'm not really in, into the UFC world, but I think she was like an MMA fighter and stuff. Anyways, beautiful, beautiful woman. She started an OnlyFans. I think she saw how lucrative it can be, and she started her own website, and now she's doing it that way. So I'm actually uh, migrating over to my own personal website on October 1st. How did be people in boxing take your moves to OnlyFans? Uh, I'm not saying there was a, a response. I don't know if there was, but was there, and how did people take it? All I'm going to say is, and I'm not going to list names because I don't want to put them on blast, but all I'm going to say is there were several people who came up to me and goes, smartest decision you made. So it was taken positively? Mm -hmm. Because they knew what I was doing with it. You know, like, I'm not, not saying that doing those things like nudity is wrong. It's to each their own. But for me personally, like, when I used to model for Maxim, the only reason I didn't get the covers is because I wasn't willing to be more suggestive. I wasn't willing to pose a certain way. And that was just how I've always been. So there's a way of doing things that is still in a classy manner without it being received negatively. So I'm just, of course, I'm always gonna be conscious of my image. Um, I've not really had any, I, I, at first, the first month on there, we had a lot of trolls. Like they came on just to see what I was up to. But they're not there anymore. I have really supportive people. Um, they're kind. They they respect that I'm not there for that, and that's that. It's been like I said, it's the smartest move I've ever made. It's absolutely changed the game for me every month. What I'm bringing in every month just from that is is kind of mind blowing. Having said that, then has there been any consideration to step out of boxing or not? Just because of that? Because you're loaded now no, no well, I wouldn't say loaded but uh, definitely did a lot better but no because I was in boxing many years ago when I wasn't making any money so and I still you know stayed in the game and and busted my ass and so here we are so no absolutely not I love this but I love that I get to do a variety of things now so it's like kind of switching it up you know the, the ACL with this and then I just did the social gloves last weekend I hosted the social gloves like it's just nice to kind of just throw in a little bit of a mix as opposed to keeping it like same old thing every single week. Just uh, before we close off, get your reaction then to uh, Fury Joshua, 90% done according to both Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn as of today. Contract to be sent um, to Joshua's side to be signed. Yeah, and Frank and Eddie working together. Okay, uh, who else is just or more excited to see them sit at a table next to each other than anything? Like, honestly. No, um, smart business move from AJ. I personally wouldn't have wanted to see it happen so soon after Usyk's fight, but I could see why it's being done. Just because it's like so soon. But I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll be wrong. But I just think that mentally and physically there should be sort of a little bit of a break there. Um, but I'm just excited to see it. Obviously, that's a fight we've all wanted to see for many, many years. I just, like I said, I just didn't expect to see it so soon. Like, I was convinced we were getting uh, the undisputed fight next. Are we not getting it? Because supposedly Usyk wants some, he didn't want to fight till next year, right? No, and that, yeah. and Tyson wanted to stay busy. He wanted a break, so I think the undisputed fight, they're planning for Saudi in February, March, April time. Yeah. Um, whoever wins that, Fury Joshua. And uh, Usyk, of course. Um, but yeah, that media week for Fury Joshua is going to be chaotic in Cardiff. It's going to be in Cardiff? Yeah. Oh, see, we'll see. I didn't even know that either. Yeah. yeah. Because, uh, Wembley doesn't have a roof, and obviously it's going to rain during that, but could rain during that time in, in the rain. UK. It will rain, so <laughs> we'll be fine in Cardiff under the roof. But yeah, that media week's going to be a, a frenzy. Oh my God, it's going to be fire, honestly. I think it'll be a great time. Um, 
Yeah, I'm looking for. What about what about you? What do you what do you think of it? I think it's good for British boxing, yeah. world boxing. Yeah, I think it's great. It's all right for YouTube channels like us as well. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be our biggest week. It's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't imagine anything bigger than that. No. Just because if you take the fact that there there aren't the title AJ's titles there anymore, it's still the fight everybody wanted to see prior to that, and we just kept always having a reason why we couldn't get it. Right? It's like the only way it was like capable of happening was like the moment. AJ doesn't have the titles and not and that's usually because he constantly had mandatories he had to um, I, I, what would be the word take care of yeah you had to take you had to take care of it so now he can have fun now he can do what the fuck he wants <laughs> I think that might be my headline yeah <laughs> all right Michelle well listen have, good to have a catch up again on IFL and I'm sure uh, we'll see you soon we'll just keep it as a, a tradition just to do every Canelo fight so we'll roll yeah that should be well, every four months, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that suits me. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah, I put my dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. There's five blokes outside my front door. You coming out? One hell of a fucking story. So stay tuned.